All right, how's it going fourth grade? So today we're going to have some fun. Um, last time we were here, so just in case you weren't here, um, what we did was we wrote our name. And so we did it first invisible because sometimes you can overlap letters and make it look crazy and get, it gets cut off. So we did that first. You could do the letters any size that you felt like it. I like doing them big and kind of all crazy. Then we went around the letters and traced them, which is an easy way to make bubble letters. Now, if you wanted to do your own kind of font or letter, that is really cool too. It's just how I do things to keep it easy. And right now it doesn't look quite right. It doesn't look like a bubble letter. Um, that's because we need to erase the inside. So we would take our eraser either on the pencil or you have one in your bin and erase the insides and you're typically left with this bubble letter. So I'm gonna quickly do that. Next, I ask that you went over your lines with Sharpie. We have teeny tiny Sharpies. We have regular Sharpies like this. But this is gonna be important because remember your artwork is going to go into a giant scanner. Take an image of your artwork and that will be printed on the mugs, t-shirts, whatever you decide to get your awesome artwork printed on. And so we really want this to be neat and clear. Some students were asking, how can I make it look more 3D? So right now it's bubble letters. This is awesome. If you wanted to do this, you can. I'm not expecting everyone to do this. So just understand this is more advanced. But if you wanna do something um, where it looks like it's coming off the page, just pick one side of your letters, take the jumbo Sharpie and give it a little bit of shadow. Are you starting to see how it's kind of popping off the page a little bit? There you go. And so I'm not outlining every side of the letter. I just picked like the right side. And now I'm giving it the illusion of shadow. Isn't that cool? I also asked you guys to split up the background with lines. So it could have been straight lines, crazy lines. I just didn't want your name just floating in the middle of nowhere, you know? Personally, I like this more abstract, but maybe there's a scene behind your name. And yes, I would highly recommend going over these lines as well. What is a gradient? A gradient is a lot as a color changing into a different color or it's getting lighter or darker. So let me give you some examples. Let's say I wanna do a gradient of this kind of orangey color. I'm gonna think about colors that are nearby in the color wheel. Remember we have a giant color wheel in the back of the room. So it shouldn't be hard locating which colors it could be. So I have a red and a yellow and then the orange is in the middle. So if I were wanting it to look like the yellow is changing from yellow to orange to red, I would probably start out with the yellow that's when I pick up the orange and I'm starting to go over the lines. Now it doesn't look like a transition quite yet. So that's why I'm gonna go in a little bit harder. There we go. But then it's changing into red. So I'm gonna go light again. What is this? I guess this is more of a violet. That's okay, that'll work too. Hard and waxy, a little bit lighter. Over that area. So it kind of has the illusion of having a gradient. And you could keep this going on. It could be rainbow colors it's with markers. Like, look, that doesn't really look like it's changing at all. It just looks like three colors of marker. But I have found that students have had success making a gradient by going over it with a different utensil. That you see what I'm saying? You can you can overlap materials to make it work for you. Now, one thing that is fabulous for blending colors is colored pencil. You can get some really awesome blends with colored pencil. You have sharpeners on your table if needed. Just find the color that matches your table color and take it. They're on the shelf. Go harder on one side. But look at that, that's an amazing gradient.
All right, so here is about all I had time to do. I gave myself about 20 minutes. So like I said over and over and over again, you do not have to finish today. We have more time. So take your time, make this awesome because I'm counting on you. I wanna see some really cool, you know, printed stuff. If you do finish or it's the end of class, I want you guys to take your fo first photo for your portfolio. So I'm gonna go over. So on your Chromebook, you'll go to classwork. Portfolio is always at the top. You'll open yours up, and last time we took some time to design the first and second slide in your portfolio. So if you could go down to slide six today, I'll write that on the board, insert image camera, and then get a photo of what you have so far. It's kind of like um, our before and after photo. So you'll get to see your art change over time, which is really cool. So have an amazing day, and I can't wait to see what you have created.